E yo guys, what's up? It's cherry, but it's uh, you know, it's not the cherry that everybody's used to. As you may know, if you subscribe to me on my main channel, which you definitely should, I post volleyball videos that are actually real volleyball videos, and I also post Pokemon videos because I play Pokemon and I love it to my core. But today, we are doing something different we are doing roblox volleyball except lib edition and i'm so so excited to be taking you guys through what i think as a libero i've gotten a decent amount of dms and questions and concerns about hey cherry how do i become a better bvl libero and what i would say is there's probably people who can explain that to you better than i can but when I looked at the research, there weren't really a lot of videos on how to really necessarily libero. I think I'm pretty decent. Guess some people consider me good. I don't know. But I think I'm pretty decent enough to just not show you how to libero, but rather show you how I do what I do. Now, with that being said, I'm going to transition over. Okay, so I have like my test dummy set up. <laughs> They're not test dummies. They're actually a part of my team, which is uh, glazed and confused, if you want. There's going to be a link to our TikTok and our YouTube, and I'm going to get killed for this, but our Instagram, please don't follow it. I'm just putting it there because I feel like I have to. Anyways, so first segment one of what I love to do, which is liberoing, obviously, is covering. Now, when I cover as a libero, and I know when I've told somebody else this, they're like, you're insane. I tell my blockers to block lines, but the insane part is I tell them to do that and I also tell them that I'm not covering lines. The funny thing is, if they get dunked over, that's their fault because they're not timing their block, right? And if a straight were to be hit and it would straight short, whose fault is that? Now you would think it's the libero's, but no, it's not the libero's fault. It's the blocker's fault because I told their butt to block the line. So once I say that, they listen to me and then they block the line and that makes our whole synergy a whole lot better but going into the all serious part when i'm covering since i have our test dummy over there which is adopted that's our uh, captain of the team as well as our best blocker uh when he is blocking line it's very reliable because he's a good blocker but that helps out my defense a lot because now i don't really have to worry about covering the straight because this is counterproductive because obviously he's right here right you're really going to get a lot of defense utility if you're about a 35 to 45 degree angle from the blocker this is so that you can cover if they're hitting cross short cut move in and also if they tool which yeah you might not believe but actually fun fact if they tool towards i guess technically that's the left you can dive in and sprint and i guarantee you if you're five four or up to five six you can cover that ball with a dive with that being said like i was saying earlier you can cover cross you can cover a cut you can even cover a feint as well like you have a lot of defense utility all because your blocker is blocking straight so this so this right now you may think oh my goodness line is wide open oh my god look at that it's such a clear hit and the libero can cover it's so easy yeah no the reason why i don't think this is productive is because yes while the straight is open you still have to cover, remember, you don't want to be behind the blocker. That's counterproductive. So you still want to be on a 45 to 35 degree angle, which means that you need to cover for cut, but you also need to cover straight. That's a 50-50. And especially in league where they're doing all these flicks and all the other stuff that they do, that's a 50-50 that you don't really want to take. While they can also tool with a cross, they can also dunk with a cross. Like there's so many more options for the hitter to do all because our blocker here is blocking cross. And also this is counterproductive because our middle is coming in and if they see a straight, they can't do anything about it because our blocker here is already covering cross. So it, and the hitter here can still hit a cut too because the middle blocker is probably gliding in. So what's gonna happen is our lovely setter here, Soda, who is also a middle uh, captain as well and also is a setter, he's gonna set Buddha and adopted our lovely middle here is gonna block a cross and i want to show you why this is problematic right off a of server receive he's setting here yeah that no you don't want that you don't want that at all because i also still have to look for that cross and and that just makes it a lot harder on me so now adopt it can you please block a straight now they just set the ball setters on target see that i can cover that I mean, he bumped it but i can cover that 
easy, nice and easy, right to the setter, can make a play. This applies to both oppo, well, this is technically setter, but setter or oppo in front row as well as my outside. I tell my outside to block straights here because same rule, same rules apply. That's that covering aspect. Obviously, for liberos, BVL stuff, blah, 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 you're going to be on shorts. When setter's back row, you're going to be longs, yada, yada, yada. Same thing applies. Literally same thing. And also, since they're blocking line, you can cheat out on longs as well. And you can help out your back left, which is something I really like to do. All right, so I kind of just realized I should probably focus on longs as well uh, because I thought it was kind of self-explanatory, but I'm going to go through it anyway. Longs, like I said earlier, same rule, same rules apply. Uh, your pin hitters are going to be blocking straights, uh, and this helps you out on longs uh, because the thing about longs, which I low-key kind of like more than shorts, although I cover shorts a little better, is you have more time. And time is of the essence, especially, I mean, in real life volleyball as well, but also in BVL, especially because you're just clicking and you see seeing people get boosted and jumping and all the other stuff that's going on. Time is great. With the setter, or yeah, I guess the setter in this instance or the oppo in that instance, if he is blocking the straight, you don't really have to respect this space. You can cheat out. Like I said, on a 35, 45 degree angle, you can lean in, cover that as well. If they try and wipe, you're still closest, and that's still your responsibility. But I might put a clip in, but it's very, very easy for you to get that wipe ball. And then crosses, like hard crosses, like over here, aren't your responsibility. But as a lib, I feel like you should at least try. And because the blocker is blocking straights, it's a lot easier for you to cheat out a little bit and help out your back left. I want to simulate a little long play. Oh, shoot. That was really bad positioning on me. And I can really respect the fact that the longs and the uh, straights are being blocked by the setter or the opposite in front row. Just like that. And they can also hard cross, but like once, like I said, hard cross isn't really your responsibility. But you can help out with that just because of the fact that they are blocking straight. See that? You can also cover wipes as well. So yeah, that's that segment as well. All right, so now I kind of went through shorts and longs, sort of, uh, regarding covering. But now, the real thing about a libero is, while you also have to cover a little more court, you also need to cover for your hitter's mistakes. You don't need to, but it's nice. And you also should probably cover blocks if they get packed. Oh, nice high five. So, what I'm going to do here is gonna just run through a little bit we're not gonna really like hit yet but i kind of want to run through for liberos what i do personally and you this like isn't stationary you can specify this with your team whatever you're more comfortable with i cover shorts like short blocks like deep clip blocks like they land right here that's what i cover because a i want to save a clip in B, I like it because if they slam down, it's a higher receive for the setter, and it gives the setter more options. Long covers are fine. They're okay, but I'm not really getting... A, I have to like adjust, figure out what power I want to do, depending on where the setter is at. I have to think about that. And then also, the receive might not be as high, and it's also kind of inconsistent because long covers, they can go line... They can go cross. They can go deep. Like, they can literally go anywhere. Rather than a shorts cover, it's going to be within that 10-foot line. And because you're potentially big arms, or I'm not big arms, I'm 5'4", quick defense, iron lungs. Um, but you have that space. Because of your big hitbox, you can pretty much be under here, and you can cover a ball that goes from here to pretty much here. All because of your hitbox. While also aiming at the setter, It'll either be, I like using one or two power because that's all they really need. Uh, but it'll either go over the net. Chances are they won't eight because they'll just get off of a block or it'll go right to the center and they have more options. So to simulate better, I'm probably over here after serve receive, I'm moving in like that. And just like that, they can get a potential cover. All right, I'm base five running into cover just like that. And that works out for me. Now you can do something different. I don't really like covering long because back left is kind of here already. But if you want to, you can. If your hitter communicates with them with you like, hey, I'm hitting a long cut, cover me. Or, hey, I'm hitting a short straight, cover me. 
things like that hey i'm hitting a rebound i like calling out rebounds a lot especially as a lib because i'm already there and that just gives our setter more options depending on the situation but um it's really up to you and it's up to your team all right i'm back so serve receive serve receive is really really simple this will take me 30 seconds as a libero your serve receive spot is right here you want to receive with five or six power depending on your setter's height and also what they preference for me uh when my captain is setting uh i like using six power sometimes i even use seven uh but it really depends on the situation uh and then also your job uh, maybe if i didn't specify is this corner all the way up to i even push it i go here but technically your job is up to here i also like to if you can i move up a little bit especially if our oppo is struggling and they're serving the oppo i like moving up just a teeny bit and another thing that i do is if I'm looking at their animation all the time. As a lib, you should always be looking at animations because that's how you're gonna cover. If I see that their animation is pointing towards back left, then maybe they're like line spinner or spinner of any kind, serving, subspec. The worst case that it's gonna go if their animation's here is probably maybe here, which is just a teeny bit off what you need to cover. So that's not even really reaching it. But what I like to do is, since I'm decent enough, I can cover my own space. But if I see their animation going, I cover my other person's space as well. But I don't really go in front of them. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, I would just maybe go side by side or it really just depends on what you're reading. Oh, this is perfect. My person is serving. From here, see the animation. Nice. Perfect. See that? That's, <laughs> I don't want to do my own horror, but that's, that, that was a perfect pass. <laughs> um, and then we can do one more here. Effortless. And, and you'll get, you'll get there. I didn't want to show off, but like, you'll get there. But yeah, no, um, <laughs> that's just really like what you, oh, and ooh, floats. So what I like to do, thank you for doing that. So floats, technically they're not your job, but as a live, you should help because no tea, no shade. But most of the time, the middles, they struggle. They struggle real bad. The middles and the oppos, they struggle real bad. So if you can come up, I hate it here. <laughs> if, you, if you can come up and help them, then I highly suggest it. Because remember, you have a high hitbox. For the floats, don't do what I did and use one power. I would highly suggest using two. Three will definitely go over though. And if it's deep, move up, just like that. Floats are kind of, they can be a little tricky, but just follow the pattern. There's a little pattern to it, you can track it. But that also takes time. So yeah, that's pretty much serve receive. Um, another thing that I like to do on serve receive, that's really, really funny. If I can make it, like I said, I'm quick defense. If I can make it, I like coming in and diving. Because sometimes, back left, they could get ghosted, they could be a little bit too short, and you running in and diving can really help out their defense and just get the ball up. And it's also a really high ball for the setter to grab, like so like that, but except the outside should be able to get those, like that precisely. See that? Nice and high ball. It's a pretty in-system ball. They can set oppo or outside. They can even, depending, do a play to middle or set a pipe. They have a lot of options with that high ball. But yeah, that's their receive. So I'm kind of running out of little things to say, um, but I'm just going to go through miscellaneous things. As a lib, I highly suggest changing your keybinds. This has really, really helped me because A, I'm not really serving. It's not like real volleyball where you can serve for a middle, if I remember correctly. It's kind of weird. You, I don't think you can serve for a middle at all. They always have to serve. So you're never going to serve. Um, so with that means you can change your keybinds. I highly suggest changing it to what I have, which is Z for two power, X for five, and C for 11. You can honestly go 12 instead of 11, but I like 11. Uh, this is for if, the, if there's a wipe all the way back here. I can cover the ball with 12 with ease. 
because my setter can reach that. Uh, and then also it works if the setter receives or if there's a corner pity all the way over here, I can set the ball to oppo. Works perfectly fine there as well. That's with 12. You can also do it with 11, but I like using 11 just in case I like misclick. I can misclick up or down and it'll be perfectly fine. Um, another thing I hot take really recommend you to not go big arms as a trait. My the reason why I'm saying this is because your hitbox is already big. Why make it bigger? Like there, there's there's no point, right? And I actually, it's funny because I just learned this the other day. So you learn something new every day. I like quick defense. My kind of sort of issue with quick defense, quote unquote, is I don't really, I can't really tell. Why am I flying? Oh my Lord. Um, I can't really tell like uh, what it's doing. I mean, I know it's allowing me to use sprint while doing an action. So what this specifically means is I can sprint while I'm clicking. Technically I can sprint while I'm diving but I felt like I could already do it before. Uh, but it's just for safekeeping, obviously. Uh, just in case you need to. If you're like struggling or lagging behind, then it helps out a lot. Uh, I love, 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 as a subspec to go Iron Lungs. Me, personally, as a lib, I'm everywhere. And my team can attest to this. I'm one minute, I'm back left serve receiving. The next minute, I'm covering my outside when they miss. The next minute, I'm covering a long ball. And the next minute, I'm setting a ball that the setter receives, which I'll get into a little bit. But um, Iron Lungs really, really helps because it's giving me one to two stamina while I'm moving, which helps me a lot. And it's better than endurance, in my opinion, uh, because while endurance is giving me three extra stam, I'm not getting that recovery. And in long rallies, I'm going to have zero stam, which is not OK. Speaking of setting, I highly, highly recommend as a set as a not a setter, but technically you will be setting as a libero. If the setter receives first ball, take that ball. Now, there are instances on my team where we have so many setters to where it's like the setter receives and our middle could set, our outside could set, our oppo could set, literally anybody could set. But if you're not lucky enough to have that team aspect, then definitely communicate with your team, hey, if the setter takes the ball on first touch, it is mine and move. Just move. Yell at a move, just move. Um, that's really it on that aspect. I don't really know what else. I mean, you can live at, honestly, you can live at any height. It's just regarding recommendations. I mean, I've lived at 6'3". I've lived at 6'5". Uh, I've lived at 5'8". It's really just, I don't want to say it's about the technique. That sounds too like, oh my God, it's all too hard and whatever, whatever. But it's really about how you're doing it and how you're communicating with the team. And then I guess the final thing really here is that I can think of is you as the libero, this is me taking like in real life stuff out real quick. As the libero, you are the king of the back row. So you need to take control of what your back row looks like. If that means you need to communicate, hey, maybe we should switch up. Maybe uh, back left, you get that short on that cut or that straight. If they're struggling, then I can cover that long and extend. Uh, if that looks like, hey, setter, do you mind taking longs and I can take short? Or, hey, I'm covering cuts, please block straights. All that communication is helping you out as a lib and also helping your team out as well because the defense is just helping out. Because without defense and without good passes, you're not going to get good sets. And without good sets, you're not going to get good hits. So with that, that is all I can literally think of. If I have anything, I'll probably add it. Uh, but if you have any questions, definitely DM me. If you have any suggestions, def not DM me. No, no, no. Don't DM me. Don't DM, don't DM me. If you have any questions, comment down below in the video. Uh, like the video if you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what else I should go over, if I should go over something more like extensively, comment that as well. I'll be looking at the comments, whatever, whatever. But this is literally just for all the questions that I've been getting on how to live. And once again, I want to preference that I'm not teaching you guys how to live. I'm teaching you guys how I do things. If you need a libero training, I highly recommend doing the BVO tutorial on receives. Uh, but this is really just what I do. 
So, yeah, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed, like I said, leave a like, comment down below what you guys thought, any suggestions. Thank you to my Gleason and Confused team. Like I said, our TikTok is going to be in the description below, as well as our YouTube, and as well as our Instagram, which I'm putting there just because I feel like I'll get killed if I don't. Uh, I'll put maybe like a clip at the end of our TikTok videos and me living and whatever, whatever. Uh, but I'll it'll pop up on the screen, something, whatever. I'll do something. Uh, but yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I hope this was helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can, you, can you back up?